All right, guys. Uh, good team win. Now, I'm proud of our football team. I'm proud of our coaching staff. They worked very hard this week. We've been working on a sale rate ever since last year. We made some improvement, obviously. I wish we could have finished a little bit harder in the third and fourth quarter. We ran out of gas. But give them credit. You know, they made some plays and they fought back. The offense made some plays when they had to. I didn't think that we uh, had the same rear car and problems that we did last year as far as the crossing rounds with guys wide open. Uh, our plan was to let them throw the fall in front of us, maybe give up some gaps running, but not be deep. And uh, for the most part, we did that. Not every time. But I thought our guys did well, tackled well in space. Offense made plays when we had to. We still have some protection issues that we have to fix. But overall, good team win, foul team. Any questions? Ed, you mentioned just the scheme, that three two six. Where did y'all sort of get the idea, and how, when did you start implementing that look? You know, we've been thinking about that since uh, the Sunday after our game last year. And really, we watched Arkansas and that, what Arkansas had done to them. We really studied Arkansas's film a lot. We made a couple adjustments. Uh, give the uh, credit to our coaching staff. Everybody pitched in. Uh, Durante did a great job of implementing our guys had a great job in believing in it. Uh, it was a little different for us because, you know, when you lead the nation in sacks, it's hard to go a three-man rush, but we had to I mean, hard, hard to do that. And, uh, but we gave up something. We told them as long as they don't beat the ball deep, we wanted to build a fence and make them throw the ball in front of us. And uh, for the most part, it worked. Kind of similar to that theme, the patience that you had to have, you know, just watching the game on yeah. TV for the first time. You know, obviously that was uh, – Different, and you know, a lot of people were very anxious yeah. about that. Yeah, we knew we knew they were going to throw the ball short. We were, I was clapping every time they threw the ball short, and uh, I knew I knew that there wasn't going to be enough points, or enough yardage to beat us if they kept on throwing the ball short. We we're going to tackle the guys, and it would make it tough sledding for them to score. Uh, obviously, the explosive plays was killed us last year, so that's why we went to eight man drop. But again, give our, our staff some credit; they worked very hard. But you know what? Give the players some credit, especially our linebackers, our corners, and our DBs. Uh, that's a new scheme. We had never played that scheme before, and I, I, you know we we practiced it this week, and our guys did a tremendous job of working it. And then, Ed, uh, offensively, you know, you guys obviously create some big explosive plays, but was there anything you think you guys did to kind of create those plays? And what you think of it? Now, say that again. What, whatever you said, what we did to make those plays. Yeah, if, you, if there's anything you guys did to kind of create those and what you saw overall. Yeah, you know, first of all, you know, zero blitz is gonna, you know, they go blitz, but they gonna give you some, they gonna give you some space. But what the first play uh, in the second half was an RPO. Uh, I can hear Jake on, on the uh, headset. The safety's coming down. We're gonna throw it to Kishon. So it was a combination of hitting them where they had open holes and a great calling. Uh, you know, that was an RPO to Kishon. Was and that was a big, a big. Uh, Play uh, was a pick route, uh, not those, not those two guys down, and it was a big uh, touchdown by 87. I think it was a good play calling uh, by offensive scheme. Still, uh, we still have some protection problems that we need to fix. Uh, Coach, you know, uh, just to ask you this question about the Mississippi State, uh, you, you had no respect for the, well, I want to say respect. You didn't think they would check the field at all doing in this game? You expect all short throws? Yes. Uh, say that again. We didn't. Uh, w- you know, we didn't. We didn't worry about the short throws. We wanted them to throw the short throws. Uh, it was those dig routes behind our fence. It was the crossing routes uh, that gave us some problem last year. It was guys wide open. We thought that if they threw the ball in front of us, uh, we win and we can tackle the ball. We and you, we knew we couldn't get impatient. Now, at first, we started running the ball, and you know, we had to make some adjustments. Uh, we'll we had a pass rush move with, some, with our ends. We had to make an adjustment to stop the run. I think we stopped the run, but it hurt our pass rush. But you can't do both in a three-man rush. You either to stop the run or rush the passer. You know, but I thought our coaches did a good job of adjusting throughout the game. I uh, wish we could have finished strong. The opening drive of the game, and Cordell Block, Jake, they were changing. I guess down the field. Talk about that play and the interception. Yeah, well, you know, obviously, I, I think, Jock, I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they expected us to be in a three-man front. I think that we gave them a little bit different stuff. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what they practiced, but we had never shown it. So I think, I, I imagine it was a combination of us being in the right place, and it was something new that they had to adjust. But as you know, Coach Leach is a very veteran coach, and 
and they made some adjustments in the second half. Hey, Coach, uh, you mentioned the tackling, uh, but particularly out of the secondary with you guys obviously losing Derek mm-hmm. and then bringing um, yeah. you know, Jay Ward and Dwight McLaughlin back this week. Just, just how impressed were you with the tackling of the secondary and executing this game plan? Yeah, we had a meeting this morning about uh, 6.30 with the coaching staff. Corey Raymond was steaming. i never seen him like that, man. He was still pissed from last year. And he says, Coach, we fixed the play well today. He was very motivational today. He taught his guys well. I think we worked well on tackling all week. Uh, but, you know, we got we had some good athletes in there. Uh, in the secondary, we've improved in our tackling. I wish we'd have. We wouldn't have gave up that touchdown. Uh, we, bit on, we bit on a little hitch route where we shouldn't have. There's still some things to improve. Just uh, Josh DeMond, uh, Brown, with the Brown, second tackle, uh, DeMond Clark led the team in tackles for four straight games. Uh, what do you have to say about his production, his role this season? Yeah, one of the things that we, you know, DeMond and I are very close, I recruited him, uh, great parents. Uh, you know, we talked about what he has to improve on, and one of the things we had to improve on was open field tackling. The other thing he had to improve on was using his hands. The other thing he wanted to improve on was pass coverage. And DeMond's an excellent young man. He's a hard worker. And uh, obviously, he looks like an NFL linebacker out there, and now he's playing like one. And uh, I want him to have the, all the success he can. You know, he stayed in state. He came to LSU. He's a great young man. He's a great student. I hope he has all the success he can. Hey, Ed. Uh, Sheldon Winkle from the Advocate. Uh, Jack took my question about Cordell. But how did those two uh, – Turnovers kind of set the tone for your defense in the first half, and how did you feel at halftime? You had to be excited at halftime. Yeah, I was excited. You know, we, hey, we say, Sheldon, big plays fuel emotions. And, you know, we had to take the crowd out of the game. And uh, we, we were going to take the football. We were going to take the football and give the ball to the offense, go down there and score. But they, they decided to take the ball, so they beat us to the punch. But uh, us having uh, those turnovers kind of took their crowd, the crowd out of the game a little bit, gave our guys some confidence. I felt good going into halftime, but I knew it was going to be a 60-minute game. I knew those guys would adjust to what we were doing, and uh, they came back. They, you know, good coaching staff. We got some good players. I wish we would have finished better. Thanks. Hey, Ed, Jeff Nowak, WWO Radio. Uh, one stat that really stood out to me, total plays, Mississippi State had 88 yeah. to 54. Yeah. You know, y'all had three touchdowns of over 40 yards in the second half. Right. Is that kind of – the system, you know, the big play ability with these dynamic wide yeah. receivers. Is that your the vision you're looking for in this offense? Yeah. That, that yeah. kind of just yeah. dynamic, dynamic attack? Well, hey, we're going to take, the, take the big plays the way we can get them. But knowing that we were going to make them throw the ball in front of them of us, and not give them big plays, we knew they were going to have long drives, as long as they didn't score. And our defense did get tired. We need to rotate a little bit better. Uh, 80-something plays are probably the most plays we played this year or close to it. And uh, we need to get used to that if we're going to play that type of defense against the spread offense. Okay, Sean, if you would just talk to me about the offensive production today and your ability to continue to find ways to get open and make plays. Uh, it was kind of switching defenses around, so I was moving kind of back and forth from field to monitor. They was looking at different looks, trying to give me the ball, and they kind of figured out the right schemes and everything, and it played out and everything fell into place. Okay, Sean, for starters, can you take us through, I guess, just both of your touchdowns, what you were seeing on those plays and how on the second one, the RPO, just how that really worked out so well? Uh, on the first one, we had ran it the first time. It was open. He tried to throw it, but he had got hit, so we came back with it the second time, and it was open again. And the same thing with the second one. It was open the first time, but he handed off the run, so the safety could come down on it hard, and then we ran it back, and he did the exact same thing, so he pulled it and threw it. Hey, Sean, I mean, obviously that's had some good plays today, but also, you know, there was some you know, missed throws, things like that. So, like, the chemistry wasn't always there, I guess. Walk me through what you saw in that. I can't hear him. You go, uh, could you repeat it?
Okay, okay Sean, uh, what, do you, what, what kind of step did y'all think y'all took today? Every week you're supposed to take a step forward in an improvement. Where do you think you improved today as far as a team? Uh, I kind of say our offense improved, and really our defense. Defense came out, played their heart out. I feel like offense, we played good. I mean, there's always room for improvement. We could have played better. But big shout out to the defense. It seems like you always strive for excellence. Um, is it a case that you're happy to be one and oh, to improve? Oh, could you repeat it? It seems like you always strive for excellence and want to improve. Are you happy with the win, but also feel like you'd like to finish a little bit better than what you guys did? Yes, sir. I, I really like the win. I feel like we could have put up more points as an offense, but sometimes you just got to be grateful you won. Jay, um, if you would, just talk about being able to get back out on the field, how that felt for you. And then, personally, as the game progresses and you understand what they're trying to do with the bend, don't break philosophy, the patience that you guys as defenders need to have to kind of just play that game plan and not try to do too much. Was that important to y'all to have success today? Yes, that was important to us. Um, as you can see, we were successful with it. And being back out there, I'm glad to be back out there. Man, it was, it was, I ain't like just saying that. It was boring. Jay, obviously, you know, last year against Mississippi State, you had to come back early from a, an injury to get, play in a game, and, and the defense just got burned. How satisfying is it today to a year later play them and, and actually defend this offense the way you would like to? Um, it feels good to beat them, play them while I'm full, fully healthy. Last year I struggled. And this year, I'm back healthy and came out on top. Yeah, hey, Jay, obviously, for you guys to be able to execute this kind of game plan, you guys needed to tackle very well in the secondary. And, you know, you and Dwight were both coming back from injury. I guess just kind of, you know, talk about y'all's ability to tackle so well with, uh, I guess, a short week of practice and, you know, being able to execute the game plan like that. We tackle so well because we work tackling drill every day. And we got to be perfect in tackling. Hey, Jay, uh, Sheldon Mickelson, the advocate of Baton Rouge. How did the um, two turnovers you guys got in the first uh, quarter, I think they were both in the first quarter, from Cordell, uh, how did that lift the defense up and what did it do for you the rest of the first half? Um, when Cordell got a turnover, we were happy for him because that was his first interception. But that let the defense know um, everybody got, can have a chance to get a turnover. Hey, Jay, Jeff Nowak, WWO Radio. Um, you know, one thing I asked Ed about, Mississippi State ran 88 plays on offense, CL's 54. You know, when you go into a game knowing, you know, the scheme is going to end up with you guys on the field a lot, you know, do you, does that, is that something you factor in as you're preparing, as you're trying to figure out, okay, my fitness level needs to be up for, for four quarters, not just the first half? You know, how do you kind of figure that out throughout the course of the game? As a DB, we run a lot, so we have to be in shape to make every play because you no know, telling how, how, uh, how, how long we're going to be running. Max, um, I'd like to ask you about the defensive effort. You know, on the sideline, I know you're preparing for your next series, but when you hear the game plan is going to be what it is, and, and I guess just the patience needed from the entire team, but especially on defense, what do you, what do you think when you hear kind of, all right, you know, we're going to let them speak and dunk all day, but we're going to try to stop them and hold them out of the end zone. Yeah. As a team, you know, what, what do you think? Does that put more pressure on you to make sure it's really – capitalize and you do have the ball? Yeah, our defense played their hearts out. And last night, Coach Joe said he was just – he was speaking his mind. He was saying, you know, the, say I throw a pick or say something happens, they got my back, and I got there. So I, I really appreciate, you know, Coach Joe and our team. I love our defense. You know, there's some dogs. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun going out there and competing. Yeah, Max, uh, you, you, you were the first quarterback uh, since Rohan Davey, 99, to throw three touchdown passes over 40 yards. That was obviously really explosive today in that way. What contributed to being able to do that, uh, at least in this game? Yeah, I think Coach Peach just dialed up some really good plays, whether if they were playing zero coverage or man-to-man. -man. I think Coach uh, Coach Peach called you know specific plays to beat that coverage, and we were able to capitalize, and um, Kayshawn made some big plays for us. Cole had his first touchdown, which was pretty sweet. So... <clears throat> Yeah, Max, I guess uh, one talk, talk about the uh, the first touchdown in the second half. Did, did you feel like it? I mean, that could go all the way if you, if you hit it just right? 
Yeah, I mean, I was, I was reading the safety on that play, and he ended up coming down and fitting for the run. And, you know, Kayshawn, I put the ball in Kayshawn's hands, and he made the play. So, yeah. <clears throat> Max, it seemed like you were kind of forced to make a lot of, you know, off-platform throws and things like that today. I guess is that, is that a result of the pressure? Just kind of how do you, how do you adjust when that's the throw you have to make so often? I think, I think the first half I had a little bit more, um, you know, off-schedule throws. But second, second half, I think we settled in. The O-line did a great job. Second half, um, you know, whether they were sliding protections or not, they did a really good job of protecting me, and uh, we, were, we were able to make some big plays. Hey, Max, what did you see out of Cole Taylor's touchdown? He, he was almost in disbelief how wide open he was there at the end to score. Yeah, so they, they, they ended up bringing zero coverage, so I had to drift on it. And then Cole actually asked me what he had on that play, and I told him his specific route. And then, uh, yeah, it, it ended up happening that way, and it was uh, – it was a big play for us. I saw him talk to you on pre-snap. I want to go back to what you said about Coach O. So he got the team together last night. Did he kind of say, look, this is what we're going to do. This is how we want to approach this game. And is that normal or abnormal from a normal game? He, he usually speaks his mind the night before games. But, he, yeah, he was just telling me that they got my back. And I got, you know, the offense has the defense backs. And I, I think that's kind of what happened today. I threw a pick. They came back. And, you know, stopped them. So I really appreciate them. And they're, you know, they always got my back and I got theirs. Matt, uh, Max, this is Scott Rappelay from the Advocate. How do you weigh the explosiveness of the offense, which is good, versus the fact that you probably would like some more sustained drive, especially at the end of the game when, you know, it would be good to be able to run some more clock off the, uh, off the board and not give them the opportunities to get back in the game? Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think we should have I – don't, I, don't, I don't know what exactly – we were trying to, I don't know what plays were being called, but I think we, we, execute the, we executed them to what was called. And, uh, yeah, I think we should have to get, take more time off the clock, and Coach Beats did a good job of calling it. Hey, Damone, when you heard the philosophy of what they wanted to do on defense this week, the coaches, what were your thought processes? And how hard is it to be patient when they're having some success underneath, you know, to kind of stick with the game plan and know what it's going to be? Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm proud of the way our team fought. Um, you know, we, we fought to the end. I mean, I'm, I can't be any more proud of the way our team played. But to answer your question, I mean, that's that's Mississippi State offense. I mean, you just got to, you know, all week the coach has been harping on, don't take the cheese, you know, just let them throw the check down and just live to see another play. So, I mean, I just, I'm just proud of the way we play. But, you know, there's always room for improvement. You know, we know we, know we got to work on it. We're going to get it fixed. Hey, Damone, uh, Coach Shelton here. Uh, you were part of two uh, big ways in the first quarter. Um, Cordell knocked the ball loose, and then you kind of picked it up. And then he got a pick in the first quarter also. I, what did that do for your defense to get those two takeaways and kind of set the tone for your effort in the first half? Well, I just want to uh, shout out Flot, man. I mean, I'm, I'm proud, of, proud of Flot, man. He, you know, he – every day, you know, he just talk, he just talked to me every day. You know what I'm saying? Just keep – you know, keep me motivated, and I keep him motivated. And to see him – you know, the first the first uh, turnover, the forced fumble, I should have scored that, but I mean that's on me. But um, I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm just proud of the way our defense fought. I mean, Flat was all over the field, you know, and I'm I'm just proud of. Him. Hey, Damone, uh, Coach Beats here. Uh, this William with uh, Tiger Rank. How you doing? I'm good. Want to ask you, uh, just you think? Last year, obviously, the defense took a the, the reputation defensively took a beating last year. Last year's game, how much do you think today maybe helped you repair that a little bit? I mean, we know we know what happened last year. You know, since the new year, new coaches. So I mean, I mean, the past is the past. You know, we just make sure that the same thing that happened last year didn't happen this year. And I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm proud of our defense. You know, we got we got to you know keep fighting and finish at the end. But I mean, I'm I'm proud of the way we fought. You know, and that way it wasn't another last year today. Hey, Damone Jock from Channel 9. Um, can you talk about the uh, the aspect of conditioning in a game like this and then also discipline just to not let the ball go over the top all day? I mean, uh, Mississippi State, I, when I was walking in, I heard they say how many plays Mississippi State did compared to ours. But, I mean, you got to be co uh, conditioned for these type of games. You know, it's SEC play. You know, Mississippi State has a specific offense that they do, you know, which, you know, like you just said, you know, just keeping the ball in front of you, not letting the ball go over your head. Well, for the most part, we did a good job. But I mean, like I said, we got 
room for improvement. You know, each week got room for improvement. You know, we just gotta improve on the explosives that they had today. Uh, get them fixed, because of course, you know, not thinking too far into next next week, but we're gonna see them same plays that hit us. Hey, Demond, this is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Grand Football. Uh, you've led the team in tackles now for the fourth straight game. Uh, how, how does that, as a statement, make you feel? Also, um, on that two-point conversion, you saw the receiver cross your face, and you hit him, which, um, for, as a linebacker, uh, when you see a receiver cross your face, your, your main instinct is to hit the receiver. Uh, what's going through <clears throat> your mind on that particular play? Uh, well, to uh, answer your first question, I mean, I, I just go out there and just, you know, whatever I got to do to help my team win, that's what, I, you know, that's what I'm going to do. It's not about – for me, it's not about the stats. I mean, like I said, I just want whatever we got to do to win. You know, I don't, I'll do whatever we have to do to win. But on that two-point play, I mean, I, we, we went over that play. So I, I knew what play was coming, you know. I saw the play. Like, we, we kept going over that play. And, I, you know, like you said, my first instance was to hit him, you know, because it was – it was two plays that, you know, that I know that they ran in two point. It was one they'll try to crack me, you know, so I, I maybe I thought a receiver was trying to crack me. So I just ran through, you know, I just hit him. I mean, I don't, I don't like the call they made, but I mean, it is what it is. We won. But I mean, uh, yeah. Hey, Demond, Ed said that as a coaching staff, um, they were looking at this three, two, six, like since the game ended last year, uh, when, as players, was it communicated to y'all that you were going to start using this scheme? And what was it like this week implementing something that y'all had never really done before? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I mean, it was you know it was uh, implemented on Monday when we uh, we made the corrections from uh, our last game, and uh, you know we we went, uh, started we got a little head start on Mississippi State, and they they installed you know the three two six. You know, and they told us, you know, just keep the ball in front of you. That's that's the biggest thing. No explosive plays. Don't bite on the cheese. Keep the ball in front of you. And I mean, it worked well. You know, like I said, like I, I know I keep saying the same thing, but we got to just finish. And that's the biggest thing. Just finish to the end. Hey, Demond, this is uh, Jeff Sibley with uh, Louisiana Grand Football. 